Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello friends, welcome back to the lecture series of Introduction to Science Fiction Studies. In the previous lecture, you have come across a lot of women and non-binary science fiction authors. In this particular uh, lecture, we will be looking at a different point of view. We will be looking from a different point of view and going to know about utopias and science fiction how they gel together. So this is the current topic that we are going to discuss science fiction and utopia. What is a utopia? Let me tell you a little small grammatical lesson over here. Utopia, the words with the sound of the uh, letter U, it will not take an N. It is not an N. A utopia, a university, a utopia. Anyway, moving back to our uh, science fiction lecture. Utopia is a kind of an imaginative place where everything is fine, everything is good, everybody is enjoying equal rights, everybody has their say, the government is kind, benevolent, compassionate, there is no criminal activity. All the uh, properties belong to everybody. Every uh, privilege is given to everybody. There is nothing of inequality in that particular area or land. So utopia is something imaginative. We have never had any kind of system in our entire world on all its history where everybody was happy. But this is the wishful thinking that we have that one day one very fine day we will come to a place we will wake up in a world where everybody has equal rights everybody is following their duties we are all free we do not have any restrictions we are free to follow our passion we are free to follow our dreams wouldn't that be wonderful right so moving on to the first point we have here today Historically alternative wishful construct. That is something Darko Suvin, editor of the famous magazine Science Fiction Studies, he mentions in his writings that historically alternative wishful construct. That is what utopia is. It is an alternative history. The world has a current timeline. This is how the timeline is proceeding. First it was 5th century BC, then it was 1st century, then 2nd, then 3rd, then now we have 2000, we are on this year 2023. So this is how time progresses and this is everything that has happened. Now what if, let me tell you, if there is an alternate version of history, something which has not happened. For example, we have the world war starting in 1914. Suppose instead of 1914, the World War never happened. How wonderful a world that would have been. The World War I, the World War II. These things never happened and everybody was happy. There was no sense of loss, pain, agony throughout history. There were no wars at all. No wars. We in our Indian history, we have the Battle of Panipat, we have the Battle of Plassey, we had the battle uh, that the Indian kings fought with the invaders from the outside of the country. All these battles, had they not taken place, wouldn't that be a wonderful uh, place, time? Both. We can imagine. And then, how would India be today? Would India have an amalgamation of so many cultures? Things would have been very different for India. So history changes how the world thinks, how the people behave. 
everything happens differently if one tiny incident of war or scientific development changes. For example, suppose we never invented electricity. Had we never invented electricity, then perhaps you might not be watching this lecture today. We might be sitting under a tree and delivering lectures and the students would be gathered around us in a complete natural uh, environment everywhere. The teaching learning process would have been different. Had we never invented paper, then that would be different. The entire history of human race would have been different. So historically alternative wishful, remember. It, this word is of utmost importance, wishful thinking. It is not a thinking like, oh, I don't like to study. This is not a wishful thinking. Oh, had I not, uh, I don't want to read, I don't want to study, but all of a sudden, all the knowledge of the world comes into my head because I sleep with a book under my pillow. That is wishful thinking. That yes, something good could have happened. Now, let me tell you one small piece of information. Science Fiction Studies is one of the best international journals that there is today. It publishes all the research materials, book reviews and uh, other associated works related to science fiction. A place of ideal perfection, especially in laws, government and social conditions. When you go to Merriam-Webster dictionary, you will have this definition. There is a place of ideal perfection where idea is that there is. We have an idea that India is democratic. We have an idea that India has actual representation of all the classes. But is it true? There are many backward classes, many people who feel that they do not have that kind of representation in the parliament. So we have an idea that India should be like this and we try to go towards that idea. But in actuality, there are a lot of differences. In reality, there are multiple variables which cannot be together working to uh, build that idea very efficiently. We are working towards it. But it is always a work in progress, especially in laws, government and social conditions. Now, let me tell you about social conditions. Consider the concept of gender equality. If you open um, the UNESCO website, you will find something called the Sustainable Development Goals. I have referred to it multiple times in my previous lecture. You must be aware of the Sustainable Development Goals. Sustainable development goal number five, there are a total of 17 goals. So goal number five is gender equality. The first four are uh, pro no poverty, zero hunger, proper education and one other point. The fifth goal is gender equality. All of us believe that all the countries should aim towards gender equality. All the genders should be treated equally. But is it a fact? Don't we see that in our everyday life, women and non-binary people, we just talked about this in the previous lecture, they are suffering. They are tormented. They do not get as many privileges as men get. So this is gender inequality. But the idea that we are trying to move towards to is gender equality. So that is an example of social condition. Law. Nowadays, we have umpteen number of laws related to men and women, but we do not have laws related to LGBTQAI plus communities. They do not have any legal representation. Whenever there is a law that is being made, everywhere it is written a man or a woman. But nowhere it is written transgender or het, um, let's say homosexual. None of these words appear in the legal context. So we are again aiming for an ideal situation where all the laws will have clauses related to all the individuals. Right. So that is a ideal perfection, a place of ideal perfection. Everything will be perfect. 
so now let us start with the beginning this word particular word utopia it was coined by sir thomas more in his book utopia 1516 thomas more was from england and that time the um, english government it was uh, not a government it was uh, the monarchy of the british throne the monarchy and the church of england they were having a lot of trouble uh, fighting each other they are trying to gain power uh, the church is trying to dominate the monarchy is trying to dominate the church there was a lot of social unrest in that situation sir thomas more wrote this book utopia see 1516 So what is the meaning of that in the book by David Seed I have referred to this book multiple times it's a very short introduction to science fiction so utopia is a hybrid term as many critics have pointed out meaning eu topia good place so eu this particular phrase means of course it means uh, it is in greek eu means good and topia this means place wherever you find the word topia you will understand that this means place so you means good and topia means place wherever you find this word topia you will understand instantly that it means a place because there are other words other than utopia will come to that so there is another representation of the same concept utopia o means whenever you hear this word in greek it means no very interesting concept everybody thinks it's a perfect place however perfection never exists it does not exist in real life can you say that this person is perfect no everybody will have some kind of imperfection if you say this computer is perfect after one or two years you will find all the flaws in that computer it is lagging behind it is showing signs of imperfection so no nothing is perfect so if we think of an ideal situation like that we will also understand that it is an idea and it does not really exist so the idea of utopia and utopia they are somehow fused together that yes it is an ideal situation but it also does not exist moving on to the next point an imaginary community or society that possesses highly desirable or near perfect qualities for its members so this is our understanding from the entire discussion that we had here above that it is a very desirable community do we not want equality yes of course we want equality we want equal privileges we don't want people to harm us so that kind of idea it is very desirable for us and of course it is an imaginary community it is a community of people where all sorts of people come together all the sexes all the genders they come together and they live with equal privileges and opportunities but this is a very important point i will come back to it time and again very thin line of difference between utopia and dystopia now if you have heard the last 5 minutes of the lecture very carefully you will not have any trouble understanding the word dystopia because as we have talked topia means place you means good and this means bad so whenever we discuss dystopia you will have to understand it is a bad place a bad situation bad community bad atmosphere bad environment and what do we understand by bad bad means when a person does not have rights not only the rights but also does not have the right to buy food does not have the right to visit a medical center does not have the right to his own or her own body 
that is a problematic situation so that particular place we can call as dystopia we will come forward uh, this particular lecture is directed towards utopia the next lecture we will be discussing a lot of dystopias last point in the slide gulliver's travels by jonathan swift 1726 in 1726 we have had particular book gulliver's travels it was written in four parts four parts a traveler who goes to four islands book 1 and 2 takes gulliver to the island of the lilliputs gives in superiority and the island of the brobdingnags makes him a plaything so when he visits the island of the lilliputs lilliputs are small tiny creatures the human beings they are reduced to a small size i'm sure you must have watched some cartoons or animes related to this concept that a human being wanders off into the sea goes to an island finds that small tiny creatures are roaming around and they look exactly like human beings all of these ideas have um, originated from jonathan swift's work gulliver's travels when he visits lilliput the islands of the lilliput he thinks himself to be god like that i am so big i have so many problems but these small things they are so small to me that i am almost like a god to them and he also talks about the um, parliament of the lilliputs it is the island is so well organized everybody has their equal share of property everybody has rights all of these things are very well managed it is a satire of the then england england did not have that kind of parliament and even if they had they had lot of inequalities so gulliver is actually trying to create a satirical environment and then he goes and visits the island of the brobdingnags makes him a plaything all lilliputs are small and in the island of the brobdingnags all the creatures are very very big all the island is full of giants giant creatures but they are also human beings they also have a very different kind of government and system and everything is fine and there gulliver is a small tiny thing so perspective changes everywhere the this idea of a very well formed community a very well formed law abiding environment has been put forward by multiple authors on multiple instances so let us have a look at the characteristics of you utopian societies number 1 not number 1 we can say that these are just characteristics there is no hierarchy abandons unlimited resources eliminating poverty and scarcity if it is a utopian society that we are talking about there will be abandons all the resources there will be no shortage of food there will be no shortage of fuel there will be no shortage of water there will be no shortage of basic amenities of life everybody will be having enough of course no poverty at all and no scarcity i'm sure um, you are aware sometimes the uh, price of the vegetables go very high why because uh, the vegetables are coming in low quantities there is more demand and less supply so in that situation it is a situation of scarcity equality a society without discrimination or social hierarchy there is no discrimination there is no casteism that this is a higher caste this is a lower caste there is no class distinction that this is the upper class this is the lower class this is upper this is middle this is lower there is no such social hierarchy no casteism nothing of these sorts are experienced in a utopian society everybody has equal rights and equal opportunities how many peaceful coexistence with nature and other civilizations there is of course in our reality we go and see we are bulldozing of trees clearing forest areas 
killing animals for fun. So in a utopian society, this is not going to happen. There will be enough forest space, enough green cover over the land, the rainfall and the weather changes will be timely and very pleasant. That is also a part and everybody will be in harmony with the natural environment. The uh, uh, human beings will not go and attack the animals, not hunt for fun. So these are the things. Advancement. Technological innovations leading to improved living standards. Nowadays, we have this very big screen of um, in classrooms, which is uh, we call as smart uh, classrooms. You can actually go and interact with that uh, screen. You can browse the internet. So it is like the blackboard, but it is actually a very big TV, smart TV kind of thing with touch screen facilities. So imagine that given to all the children of the society. Everybody has their own set of desk, own study place. No problem. Nobody coming and telling that no, you should not study. Especially this is a problem with girl child. You shouldn't study. You should go and cook, help mother, clean the house. I have seen this kind of situation and it is a reality, let me tell you. But the boy child will never be asked to go and cook or to go and help with the household work. The boy child will be only um, expected to study, maybe go out and play with their friends. So this is a disparity that we have in our society. But with the technological advancement, every girl child, boy child, whatever gender that person belongs to will have equal privileges, equal access to technology, then that is an ideal situation we are talking about. Collective responsibility. This is almost a non-existent concept. When we go out in the street, you will find somebody throwing, um, you know, uh, Pepsi soda can over here, somebody eating samosas and throwing the uh, paper uh, basket over there. Everywhere there is dirty. The, the streets are unclean. Everybody thinks that it is the other person's uh, responsibility to go and clean it up. Everybody feels that way. And let me tell you, this is the uh, duties prescribed by the Constitution of India that you must follow the duties of a good citizen. And it's a famous um, proverb, when it is everybody's duty, it is nobody's duty. So everybody thinks the other person is going to do that. Collectively, we see very less efforts. Only when you find a politician coming and doing something, cleaning the road and helping the poor, everybody will flock. Just to get, you know, in the limelight, just to get in the media, everybody will go and flock that uh, person, group together, come in the photo, and the next day they will uh, completely forget about it. So everyone works for the common good. This common good idea we have in our head, but never in the reality. What happens if I don't throw the soda can on the road and find a particular dustbin, go and throw it over there? It is the good that we are serving. It is not uh, endangering the integrity of the environment. I'm sure if you just Google uh, strangled sea creatures, you will find a lot of dolphins, uh, fish and uh, sea creatures, turtles who are strangled, strangled means somebody ties something around your neck and you uh, struggle to breathe. So all those sea creatures are strangled by plastic that we dump in the ocean. It is um, the plastic that we use, it is non-degradable. It cannot decompose, it will be there forever. So instead of dumping plastic outside, it is our responsibility to collect all the plastic or polyethylene um, packets that we have and dispose it or give it to the government for recycling. But we don't do that. We just, oh, fine, the plastic, uh, the vegetable person has given us a plastic. In that plastic, 
we will collect all the household uh, dirt and uh, we will dispose the plastic somewhere on the road. So this is a situation. This is not acting towards common good. But if we think, if we wish that there will be a world where everybody will act towards the common good, what a beautiful world that would be. That is a utopia. The golden age of utopias, the 19th century. Of course, previously we saw that there were utopias that were being um, created, uh, starting with Sir Thomas More. But in the 19th century, many authors started coming forward with their ideas of utopia. Let us have a look at some of those beautiful ideas. This, the first one is Erewhon by Samuel Butler, again an English author. In 1872, he writes this particular book. A society in which it is a crime to fall ill and where machines have been abolished because humans feared they would take over. They means the machines would take over. So see, there are three situations. A crime to fall ill. You cannot fall ill. If you fall ill, you will go to prison. So it is a kind of imposition of the, uh, on the human beings that you must stay healthy. You cannot fall ill. If you are falling ill, that means you are not taking care of yourself. You might find that it sounds a little bit of a bad situation than good situation. But let me tell you how the author has presented it. The author has presented it as, it is your first and foremost duty to take care of your health. In our society, in this present society, all we are doing is study, 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 work, 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 get, uh, earn a lot of money so that we can pay for our medical expenses. This is our society. But if instead of working, working, working and not taking care of health, if we just do enough work, we will be able to take care of our health and there will be no medical expenses thereafter. So that is the idea. And machines have been abolished. Every human beings are requested to work and contribute to the society. There are no machines because machines, everybody in that society believed that machines are something that can take over the human um, authority. So that is something we also have in today's world and we call it AI, rise of the AI revolution. That someday all the artificial intelligent robots, they will start gathering together, become a community and try to overthrow the rule of the human race. A strange manuscript found in a copper cylinder, 1888. So right after 1872 Erevon, we have 1888, a strange manuscript found in a copper cylinder, written by James D. Mill. He is a Canadian author, as you can see, combines shipwreck with the found manuscript convention. It is a convention. Convention means a practice that has been going on with the authors that they, when they write a book, they don't say it outright that this is the story I'm giving. They say that, oh, I have found a manuscript somewhere in a library or in somebody's attic. This is not my writing. I've just found it there lying and I'm sharing it with you. This is a common practice at that time. So, uh, the previously we were discussing Gulliver's Travels. This is also a found manuscript convention. Here, describing a world near the South Pole where gender equality has been achieved. Again, we are commenting, this book is commenting on the social convention, the community life that there is a place in the South Pole where no human being has gone before and gender equality has been achieved. It is a utopia. There are another kind, uh, one we got to know about the found manuscript convention. There is another type of novels or writing that is sleeper wakes novels. Sleeper wakes means suppose a character who is telling the story has been sleeping for over a century and suddenly after some time he wakes up 
and the world he is seeing is completely different from the world he remembers so for him or her this world is something to be observed and the entire book that is written is from a new perspective looking backward by edward bellamy 1888 also in the year this book was published so this strange manuscript found in copper cylinder and looking backward these two uh, books have been authored and published in the same year presents a future society based on cooperation and equality of course again another situation where all the people cooperate with each other if somebody requests some kind of help social help from another person in the same community another person comes forward and helps that person isn't it a wonderful situation we don't have that kind of people if i go and ask for help from the neighbor the neighbor will first ask me 20 questions why do you want this what are your other options why other people are not helping you what happened to your relative who oh, that relative can help you why is that relative not helping so all this type of situation there is but here everybody is cooperating with each other another example when you go uh, driving through a road and somebody hits your car you come out and uh, you shout shout at the other person and people forget whose fault it is but in that kind of society you will not have this kind of shouting both will be apologizing to each other i'm sorry the other car will say no no i am sorry we will say i am going to pay for the uh, damages to your car the other person is going to say i will also pay for the damages to your car can you imagine in india this happening had it been happening it would be a wonderful life wouldn't it and equality of course i have written another very interesting point czarist russia banned this volume everybody was so much influenced by this book that all of a sudden it was a best seller everybody was reading uh, bellamy's uh, looking backward the sleeper woke up in a world which is beautiful and better than the world he fell asleep in so the czarist russia who does not believe in equality does not believe in cooperation believes in the monarchy monarchy is the rule of the king believes in monarchy they completely banned this volume they said no this volume should not enter the russian territory will not enter so this much influence this book had on that society the next book here is news from nowhere by william morris william morris was again very much influenced by looking work backward by edward bellamy and this he published after 2 years a socialist utopia set in a future england with no private property or wage labor there is no wage labor all the labor is done for the good of the state i am not paying you for your labor because there is no private property everybody has if there is a car whoever needs the car can go and use it this is a concept of a state let me tell you it is there in the socialist uh, model of state socialism is the higher form of communism communism is the ultimate goal of marxism i'm sure there are other lectures on uh, social theories like marxism socialism communism just have a look at those theories you will understand what i'm talking about that marxist people they believe that uh, there shouldn't be any class division there shouldn't be any higher class or lower class based on the amount of money they have everybody should have equal money socialist says that nobody should have any money everybody should be given or everybody should take their share of uh, things they need for life their entire money system should be removed no private property or wage laborers now we will take a diff, a, a very detailed look on bellamy's looking backwards published in 1888 it's a socialist utopia 
in the year 2000. So 2000 has crossed, of course, and we know there has been no such improvement as Bellamy had thought there would be. But let us always be hopeful. Without poverty, crime or class distinctions, there is no poverty. Everybody has whatever things they need for their life. They have food, they have clothing, they have shelter, they have education opportunities. The community that is growing is very technologically advanced. The environment is good. The infrastructure of the community is good. Everything is going on uh, very smoothly. There is no crime. There is nobody is going to physically harm anybody. Nobody is going to launder money. Nobody is going to steal from another person. There is no criminal activity or class distinction. Like I said, upper, lower middle, upper middle and uh, lower class, there is no such class distinction. Okay. Public ownership of industry and resources, eliminating wealth disparity. In this book, Bellamy also gives us this idea, public ownership of industry and resources. Everybody together owns the industry. What happens nowadays, if you just go and uh, look into the kind of industrialists that India has, you will find names like the Tatas, the Birlas, the Ambanis, the Adanis. They are all industrialists. They are all capitalists. And they have a lot of money because they're making profit. So in this looking backwards book by Bellamy, the society that he's showing, nobody has, uh, nobody personally owns an industry. The industry belongs to the people who work. Eliminating wealth disparity. The moment you stand uh, or go out in the street, you will find somebody who comes out of, uh, let's say, uh, Mercedes-Benz and somebody who is taking a cycle to work. There is a huge wealth disparity between people in our society. But imagine a community where there is no such thing as wealth disparity. Disparity means inequality. Citizens belong to an industrial army, work for the common good. We have discussed this already. Everyone is assigned a job based on their abilities and preferences. This is a very important point again. I am good at writing. I am good at writing. So I will be given the work which are related to writing. I will not be forced to do, uh, let's say, data entry work. I will not be forced to go and teach. My work is to write, to create content. I am a very good um, musician. I will not be forced to go and work at an office. I will be uh, encouraged to move forward in the field of music. Equality is a core principle of the utopian society. Again, all receives the same standard of living and access to resources. Whenever we need medical help, there is the government hospital and there is the private hospital. The government hospital, all, everybody is going there, especially the ones who cannot afford a private hospital. The government hospital is in a very bad condition. Uh, there are um, more patients and less doctors. More patients, less medicine. More patients, less beds. More patients, less facilities. And not all the people can afford a private hospital. They are... Uh, for the filthy rich people who can just go and get a uh, surgery done the very next day. In government hospitals, even if it is an urgent surgery, we have to wait for at least one month. They will give you a date that you come on this date. That day you will be given, uh, you, you can undergo the surgery. So is it an equality that we are uh, experiencing? No. The people with money they are getting medical services right at the moment. But the people who cannot afford such kind of private services has to wait in a long queue. So 
in uh, bellum is looking backwards there is no such privileges there is no such inequality everybody gets their own share and uh, when they need it advanced technology powers the society labor more efficient so the labor that people are giving is more efficient the technology is more developed why because the person who likes engineering has gone to study engineering has become an engineer a person who likes music has not been forced by the parents to study engineering so that person can earn more money instead the person who likes music has been encouraged to the go to the music field and uh, uh, the field of entertainment there he excels there she excels and thereby she earns whatever money she can earn and of course there is no private property here no private concept so the labor is also very good and efficient benefits of automation and modern conveniences everything is automated the ticket system is automated the uh, healthcare facilities are automated you can automatically get a vaccine you don't have to wait for a doctor to come you just sit in front of a machine and they will inject a needle you can automatically uh, go and have um, can uh, now we have vending machines of course everywhere at that time when bellamy was writing this novel there was no concept of vending machine what's a vending machine uh, you might have seen in movies and everywhere that you insert a dollar or a coin inside a machine and a packet of chips a bottle of water falls down now it is in uh, delhi metro or in the other metro cities the um, metros have this kind of ticket vending machine where they give you a token the moment you enter a, a 10 rupee note or a 20 rupee note or a 100 rupee note you can recharge your card or you will get a token so those are um, automations automatically the work is done advanced technology powers the society making labor more efficient oh this we have already talked about education is a priority all can access high quality learning education is top most priority everybody is given the opportunity to learn and to learn as per their conveniences i want to study arts but i am forced to study science that kind of disparity or that kind of forcing is not there in this society intellectual development is encouraged to create well rounded citizens well rounded citizens we mean that a citizen who has a conceptual understanding of the world it is not only the bookish knowledge that he or she has he or she is able to understand where to apply apply the knowledge to whom to give the knowledge in what context the knowledge should not be given all these things the citizen will uh, be able to assimilate or understand or express so the intellectual development and education these two things are priority in this book a centralized government oversees the equitable distribution of resources there is one centralized government and that government looks into the equitable distribution that is whatever resources the country has it is equally distributed among all so that the country survives government officials are related elected based on merit and serve the public interest so there is a merit based opportunity kind of system if you have that kind of merit you will be able to serve the government these are a few other uh, books uh, uh, related to the utopian science fiction one is island by aldous huxley huxley we have read in details this is just to mention that huxley has also written this utopia describes a peaceful society on a remote island that balances technology and spiritual values so not only there is a jump towards the technological advancement but it is also a retaining of the spiritual values the traditional values the customs that we have had from since our birth all these things accumulated once we move towards technological development we seem to forget that there is a spiritual sense to ourselves 
we forget meditation. We are almost engrossed in content consumption. Instagram, Facebook, right? WhatsApp, Snapchat. We are always scrolling. We are always uh, looking at other people's lives, never looking at ourselves, never introspecting. Introspecting means looking inside, never retrospecting. Retrospecting means looking backwards. That is what exactly uh, the book is. That is the book that we have been studying so far. The Disposers by Ursula K. Le Guin explores an anarchist society on two neighboring planets. So the two planets, they just discuss what is the condition of society in one planet and the other planet. There is a contradiction, there is a contrast, there is a... In this communication, it comes out that there are multiple good values as well as bad values. Ecotopia by Ernest Callenbach, a vision of an environmentally sustainable society in the Pacific Northwest. So, topia is again, it means place and eco. I'm sure we have all heard of uh, about this word eco. It means related to environment. In this ecotopia, everything is in a very good condition. All the environment is unharmed. They do not have the pollution to destroy it uh, completely. The pesticides are not ruining the fields. The water is not polluted by the sewer system. The air is not polluted by CO2 and other uh, gas emissions. The ozone layer is perfectly healthy. Uh, the soil is not uh, eroding down the river. So all of these things are uh, not happening in Ecotopia. Walk Away by Cory Doctorow. This is the... Uh, latest one that we have for now, 2017, envisions a society where technology allows people to walk away from traditional systems. So the traditional systems that we have, the tradition that pulls us down, sometimes, of course, tradition is a very inherent part of every individual personality, but every time tradition may not be the answer to everything. At one point of time, you will have to move forward. Actually, you moving forward is you pushing the boundaries of tradition. You are expanding the meaning of tradition because you want to go out of tradition. That will become a tradition someday. So, it is never that we walk away from tradition, but we are actually expanding the boundaries. Isn't, isn't it a wonderful thought that there will be a place where every individual has the opportunity to expand their boundaries and make other people follow their footsteps, right? Now, the Welsian Utopia. We have discussed the author H.G. Wells and his works so far. Here, Wells is considered as one of the you know, best writers of Utopia right after Edward Bellamy. A modern utopia, 1905, a dualistic utopia where two worlds exist side by side. The traveler explores an utopian society. The traveler explores a utopian society with advanced technology and a non-utopian world with familiar societal issues. So, A.G. Wells writes a modern utopia in 1905. The world set free, 1914. Nuclear bombing destroys the world world order where poverty and war persisted. This is a very controversial utopia. I'm sure you must have heard about the uh, concept that in order to stop wars, you have to have a one final war. So war to stop wars. One final war where you will destroy most of the population of the earth and everybody will start the civilization right from scratch. So, the world set free, written in 1914, the world is bombed by nuclear bombs and uh, half of the population is dead, half of the people are surviving and they struggle together to build a civilization again. Men Like Gods, 1923, a group of Englishmen travel to another planet where they encounter their future possible selves 
and uh, there is no class and no government. This is again a wishful thinking. If we go to another planet, there is actually not alien species. That planet is having a different timeline. Timeline means we are the people in that planet. If I hear, uh, suppose my name is K and K has gone to that planet, there is also another K in that planet. That K does not have a government which um, discriminates. That K does not live in a society which has any class. There is no higher class, upper class, lower class, middle class. So the uh, entire future of K is in that planet and K is living in the present in this planet. Very interesting concept. The shape of things to come. A futuristic novel predicts a global conflict leading to a new utopian world order most elaborate description. So this is the novel written by H.G. Uh, Wells in 1933. This novel has the maximum attention to details. After the writing of um, uh, this particular book, looking backwards, everybody started to criticize the book. How can it happen? How can all of these things that you are saying in this book can happen? So we can say that this particular utopia Wells is writing is kind of a response to looking backwards, which was written in 1888 by Edward Bellamy. This utopia is a response to this, that yes, this can happen. And uh, he, H.G. Uh, Wells has given a lot of description and uh, rationalization of the matter. Feminist utopia. What are the features of feminist utopia? We have so far been discussing gender equality. Now we will look at it from the perspective of feminism. Not to worry, it is not a very big term. Feminism is only uh, women-centric ideas. The world is uh, uh, patriarchal. The world has this idea that men are at the center of existence and women draw the idea of identity from the male members of the society. Feminism does the opposite, that no, women are individual. That is the starting and ending point of feminism. So the feminist utopias we will be having will of course have traditional gender roles challenged, address issues of patriarchy, sexism and discrimination, women child, uh, the girl child sitting and uh, doing household work, whereas the boy child going to school, this kind of discrimination is not going to happen. Gender equality will be there. Women and men are treated as equals in all aspects of life. Egalitarian relationships. Partner, egalitarian means very highly platonic, uh, absolutely uh, perfect kind of relationships. Partnerships and relationships are based on mutual respect and consent. Only there will be a mutual understanding between the two. There will be a very good, healthy atmosphere in the family or in the society. Reproductive freedom. Women have control over their reproductive choices. Nowadays, even in this world, you will find this statement floating in the air. After 30s, women should get married and have children. It is medically true, by the way. But if a woman does not want to do that, it cannot be anybody else's choice. But generally, the society pressurizes her that you must have uh, a child by the age of 35 otherwise it there will be complications but let it be her choice so that is the idea that women have been fighting for so long i am saying that 35 but actually the idea where it started from was when women were married off at the age of 12 and they were forced to bear children by 13 and they were also forced to keep bearing children till 40. So that is a problematic situation we have, uh, we have overcome now. Margaret Cavendish's The Blazing World 
published in 1666. This is uh, one of the earliest utopias, feminist utopias. A separate world approached via the North Pole that has achieved gender equality. Mary Griffith's 300 Years Hence, which is published in 1836. Experiences of a male time traveler wakes in a future. Of course, again, the sleeper wakes kind of convention. A sleeper who wakes up in a different world. Tremendous technological advancement along with gender equality. So 300 years hence has uh, the component of gender equality. Margaret Cavendish, Cavendish's The Blazing World also has the component of gender equality. Sultana's Dream by Rokea Sakhawat Hussain. A dream where Sultana travels through a land where women have achieved technical advancement and they dominate the men. So this is not what these two is about. They are talking about equality. But Sultana's dream is talking about disparity, is talking about inequality. She says that it should not be uh, patriarchy. Patriarchy is male domination. It should be matriarchy. Matriarchy is domination of the women. The women of the entire country, they will be dominating over the men. They will force the men to stay indoors. They will capture the men and put them in a place. All these things are going to happen. And let me tell you, there is a very good reason. What uh, Rokea Sakavat Hossein gives is that men does most of the criminal activities. So once we lock the men up, in a room, there will be no criminal activity in the society. At least that is what she thinks. Her Land by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, 1915. A secluded society composed entirely of women, no male domination. So this is not like Sultana's dream that we had looked at before. This is unlike this. Her Land, it is her plus land. You can also say it as her topia. Okay, so um, so her land by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, which was written in 1950, talks about a society where the entire society is composed of women, but men are not dominated. They are not uh, kept in the house. They are not uh, uh, captivated. They are not under any kind of pressure. Women on the Edge of Time, 1976, by Marge Piercy, a Mexican-American woman struggling with poverty and institutionalization, institutionalization, stumble onto Women on the Edge of Time, 1976, by Marge Piercy, a Mexican-American woman struggling with poverty and institutionalization, stumbles onto alternate utopian realities. This is one of my favorite books, let me tell you. Imagine a person who has been put to an institution. Institution means mental asylum. That person is suffering from some mental disorders and she is struggling with poverty. Suddenly, she develops a world inside her head. She imagines that there is an alternate reality where she is not struggling with poverty, where she is perfectly healthy and the world is perfect. So, it is a very creepy thought though, but the psychological involvement of the author and the exploration of the theme is wonderful. The Gate to Women's County, published in 1988 by Sherry S. Tepper, Set in a post-apocalyptic future, a matriarchal society where women hold power. So this is again something like Sultana's dream. But not like her land that is written by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. So we must remember these differences of ideas. Somewhere there is gender equality. So if we sum up, there are these three most important ways in which the ideas are related to feminism. One is gender equality. Number two, we have uh, female domination.
and uh, number three we have male domination every work of literature is mostly related to number three but the feminist utopia are related to either gender equality or female domination so gender equality is where women are dominating but uh, the men are not dominated so there is a kind of equality okay so after this we move on to some question answers that uh, you might practice in order to get the most out of this session what do you understand by the term by the term utopia what do you understand by the term utopia name some science fiction utopias you can easily go back to the slides that we have been discussing. There are lots and lots of examples. You can pick and choose. Name some literary works from the golden age of utopias. There was a golden age, the 19th century. And during that golden age, many authors contributed to the field of science fiction utopia or utopia in itself. So take a look and pick some names and literary works. Identify the element of science fiction in Samuel Butler's Erewhon. Just go, um, what you have to do here is that read the story of Erewhon. You will be, it is uh, just because it is 200 years old, it is available in the public domain. Uh, go to the internet, search for Erewhon, read the story if you like, read the summary and identify which features we can uh, um, consider as science fiction features. Discuss some key features of Bellamy's utopian science fiction. Bellamy's utopian science fiction, looking backwards, try to think of the key features, education, society, politics, labor, work preferences, uh, efficient, efficiency of the society. Look into those aspects and write down some answers. What do you understand by feminism and how is it related to science fiction? Feminism, you don't have to go into the entire history of feminist movement. Just your understanding of feminism and how is it related to science fiction. Are there any expressions of feminism in science fiction? If so, how? Name some feminist utopias. Why do you think that there is a very thin line between utopia and dystopia? While uh, during the discussion of uh, this lecture, you might have seen that there are some points where you find that in order to begin a utopia, you have to first uh, go through a dystopia. Like um, when Wells is writing, the world set free. In order to stop a war or in order to stop all the future possible wars, you have to have a one big war and that is going to be a dystopic reality. Discuss with examples similarities between themes and stories in the Utopian science fiction realm, especially with reference to feminist utopias. Once you are able to answer all of these questions, we will be able to focus more on the dystopian section because the next lecture will be discussing dystopia with reference to our understanding of utopia. Thank you for joining us today. See you in the next lecture.